name is Madrin Chiku, the National Agenda and uh, Advocacy Coordinator of World Vision. I'm so excited today uh, because we have been able to achieve our major goal, primarily because Bindura records the highest uh, statistics in terms of GBV. We also felt that out of the 52% uh, prevalence rate of GBV, it's possible that students could also be affected that's why we targeted the Zimbabwe Ezekiel Guti University and Zimbabwe uh, Bindura University of Science and Education. And the responses have been so overwhelming, uh, like we heard from Tendai Bepe just now. Uh, he is um, excited about the information levels that they've uh, received because it empowers them to respond as boys. And from Zeg University, we also re uh, received the similar information that girls are now empowered, they are now assertive, and they are able to respond uh, in a positive manner to mitigate the effects of GB. Hey, my name is Tendai Bebe. I'm a student here at Bindura University. I'm studying financial intelligence from the it's from the faculty of commerce. I would like to thank World Vision for such a program where we were issuing out issues concerning uh, gender-based violence. It's quite a program that actually benefited us uh, specifically. Uh, we benefited a lot from this program. It was more than relevant to us as young growing uh, children and adults. Uh, with knowledge, you are able to act. So with such a dissemination of information that was what, that was not actually provided prior to us, we really appreciate that. And with that information, I feel we've been empowered and we'll act towards anything else that comes along our way, knowing that we have World Vision on our, on our way supporting us throughout, knowing that we have Child Lines and any other organizations that are shouting out there for gender-based violence. Gender-based violence is something that we actually come across every day at university levels. And the first step that World Vision has taken to actually disseminate information that is crucial towards how we should act towards it, I think that the first and very important. The second thing, we need more interaction with these people so that we will be able to open up and to invite more and to socialize and to have platforms where we can actually communicate freely and speak our hearts out as well to them. And also when we report issues to them or when we raise issues of concern to them, we need to see them uh, acting on our side, helping us throughout, supporting us. As victims at times we really need that help because when one of us reports the issue and nothing is done about it then automatically it doesn't give us the energy to go on so what we are saying what they have done they've recognized us and we really appreciate the fact but we want to encourage them to keep on doing that great work improving for us coming more for us in practical terms setting out platforms social platforms where we can communicate with them and above all we really want them to stand with us as they have been doing we want them to continue they should continue have the energy to stand with us every day of our stay. We know we have these issues. Some of them are not spoken because of conditions and environment that we are in. But if we know we have a giant behind us, we are ready to say it out. Not much, but occasionally we find uh, conflicts uh, happening between students. And you know, students as they grow up, uh, they are involved in matters of courtship. And you find that uh, some uh, young men or uh, young ladies may not have the, up the right approach. So that's when we have, uh, the, I can say, the forms of gender-based violence, not physical as such, but many verbal and, uh, you know, in terms of action, behavior. Mm. Yes. And boys will always be boys. <laughs> <laughs> but we don't have cases of many cases of physical violence. No. Okay. Mm. And in terms of awareness, uh, before we even brought this program, would you say you were pretty aware of uh, the students? Were pretty aware of what you do is? Like, we, are there any we, programs that you are doing yes, independently as a university? Yes, we cannot say fully aware. Okay. Mm. Uh, but we have had uh, we have programs. We have had one which uh, was run by the UN uh, on gender-based violence. Um, and also, we have some programs, I thought I was going to mention them later, that uh, this program is really, your event has really enhanced our programs. Because we have uh, programs like growth counseling, where we um, 
groom our students on growing up and certain values they should carry or certain behaviors they should exhibit. We also have a policy on sexual harassment. And uh, the forms of sexual harassment, in fact, some of them we have already cited in this uh, meeting today. And we are so excited that really it has enhanced, enhanced our efforts in uh, developing our students. Mm -hmm. And in, in brief, just lastly, how relevant would you say this um, campaign, the World Vision hosted today, is to the affair, to the running of the affairs of this university? Would you say it's, it's relevant at all? Yes, really relevant, significantly relevant. Why? Because uh, one of uh, our the one of the aspects of our mission statement <coughs> is to produce highly acclaimed graduates. And uh, a student who is not uh, groomed in matters of gender-based violence has no discipline. And uh, we have enjoyed uh, general good discipline at this university because of such efforts, such initiatives, which sensitize the students about the importance of character. You know, because as I have always said to students, uh, while the world demands talent and uh, expertise, but it pays off on character. Yeah, if people first know who you are by character than your knowledge. Sometimes you later develop your knowledge, de de demonstrate your knowledge, but what they first see, what the world first sees, is your character. Because of, of being beaten physically, she said no to gender-based violence. Then there's economic abuse. Well, that one, we, we're not going to go into that, but it's with the holding money for household use, prohibiting money from any income, taking partners' earnings, or forcing a partner to leave the house in which they are staying, or forcing a partner not to work. And if I were not sick and a battle, one of our friends at university, as if I was a roller, what you were already first. That's economic abuse. Cultural or customary harmful practices which discriminate against women and girls, such as Pujarira, uh, widow cleansing, forced inheritance, uh, forced virginity testing, forced sex with father-in-law. Can you see that you can know it? You can see that 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 you can see Then there are also abusive acts caused by discrimination on grounds of age, disability, or disability. I'm doing marketing in the Faculty of Politics. And uh, this campaign has helped the girl child in that we now know how to fight gender-based violence and we now know how to react to it. And for males, I think it would be advisable for them to be part of this so that we hear their side and why they engage in such activities. And uh, I've discovered that most men, they fear like uh, what the society will say to them about gender-based violence. But if we approach them in a different way, I'm sure they'll be able to engage in such activities in their world. From the church's perspective, I think um, if we encourage the pastors and the deacons to preach about it every time, every time and again, it would benefit the girl child in that most people, they fear the Lord more than anything. So if the advice comes from the pastors and the deacons, it would help us in that we would be motivated to act in a certain way just because our pastors are acting in, in a different way. So for university students, for you as my female students, what do you think are the root causes that expose us as female students to gender-based violence? Remember, the answer is what? The answer is wrong. It's like writing an essay where if you give an answer, it just provides justification on it. But for now, what do you think are the root causes? That's from the top of your head. What do you think are the root causes? That's from Azir. Yes, you want to try? Thanks. What do you think are the root causes? Just one. Thank you. And Spanish not peer pressure. You might? Yes? Failure to know your personal rights. Another one? Pananiake. Yes, my sister. The need to fit in a society. Right, thank you. Let me. Okay, yes? I think in general, what the society says about the power that women have over What the society says about the power that men 
you have over women. And it's in HIV and AIDS. Tanzo, what do you mean? No, I can say no more periods. I don't think I'm going to fuck another woman. As in, how do you want to manage? Don't be that name echo. But in the camp, we have one that can manage HIV and AIDS. He can pay her, but she can't come on my period. What's your take on that? Yes, when you're not a domestic violence, the guy in Chica, when you need me, I'm my regular guy. I don't get to work in this one. We share my life with you. So, to you, but you're not there. I'm just saying, I'm going to turn up and go. Then you go up the path and then you walk around past the papa. I'm trying to turn around and go. Then you get to look up and go. No one yet is ever going to walk. Okay. 
information on GPV or with information of gender, there is a woman's face which is there. But in this campaign, in this campaign now we are saying that uh, the young men, they are the agents of change. So they have been trained, so they are now conducting dialogues. In Pindura we have trained about 10 of them who are now conducting uh, community dialogues whereby they engage other men with information on gender-based violence, on how as men we can play our part in ending gender-based violence. And also, they are also engaging parents and guardians on how they can socialize young men so that they also treat their uh, female partners with respect and also that they can be able to show emotion. Because I remember when we were growing, we were told that a man is not supposed to cry. But we are saying that we should do away with such a uh, cultural factors that are harmful or that come back to, uh, to, to bite us. Thank you. Good afternoon, my name is Nyesha Jabangwe and I'm from the Faculty of Commerce and I'm studying Marketing. Uh, the importance of search and organization is to make ladies aware of their importance and their value in the society. Also making them aware of certain uh, things that they can suffer if they're ignorant. So I find this organization or search workshops really important as it helps us know what steps to take in cases when one is raped or when one faces such a, a situation. So as a word of encouragement, I also think in such workshops, males should be involved so they can know why we take certain steps or why we dress the way we dress. As some of them say, they're raping ladies because of their dressing or because of our actions. So I think if men are involved in such uh, workshops, it helps them understand us from where we are coming from. Okay, just a word of advice to the ladies or the males who might fall victims of certain issues like rape. I want to say, don't hide it. Don't just keep it in your cocoon. Just report it in as much as you feel like it's a shaming, but it's better for one to report it as you can be helped with immediate effect. And as we've learned today, they say when you face such a situation, report first to the clinic so you can be helped within 72 hours. And to the perpetrators, just want to say, be aware because now we know your actions and we're not afraid to just say it out. For these and other stories, visit our website www.263chat.com. Follow us on Twitter at 263chat and like our Facebook page, 263chat.